you. Yes. Oh, God, what's he done now? It's not what he's done, Doreen, it's you. Martin has sent us a tape, a videotape, telling us the truth. Now I want to hear it from you. Ruth, now, Doreen. I want the truth now. Please answer me, Doreen. Is what Martin said on that tape true? He told you about Danielle, didn't he? And it is. Oh, God, I prayed that Martin was lying. Ruth, I never meant to hurt you. I never would have dreamed Martin was telling the truth. What kind of woman are you? Oh, please, Ruth, let me explain. Explain? How can you explain look, this? Look, I know, I know how it must sound, but... But when I first met Adam, I was lonely. More alone than I had ever been in my life. He didn't know I was married, and, and I had no idea he was your son. Do you hear what you are saying? Do you know how sordid this is? A married woman picks up a young boy just out of college and entices no, him into no, an no, no, affair. No, it wasn't like that. I cared for Adam. And, and he cared for me. Ruth, this was long before you and I became friends. I had no friends. Don't you see how important it was to me to have someone I could talk to? And just how... Did you justify bringing an innocent child into this selfish scheme? I didn't know I was pregnant until long after I'd ended things with Adam. You knew it before I did. Remember? But uh, I was devastated when I first found out. I knew that this child was Adam's and... Uh, I couldn't begin to face the ramifications of what that would all mean, but... Then I thought about how much I had wanted a child. Martin and I had tried for 16 years, and I just couldn't give it up. And no matter how much pain it would cause us, I will never regret the day my baby was born. She's your granddaughter, Ruth. Oh, stop it! Just stop it! My God. I look at you, I don't even know you. I'm surprised you even told Martin the truth. But then you seem to be so good at deceiving us all. I never meant for Martin to know. Well, of course not. No wonder. No wonder he hated Adam, and no wonder he wanted revenge on you. All this time, all this time, I thought you were the victim. My God, you made fools of us all, didn't you? You wanted us to believe that Martin was the great manipulator. But all the time, it was you. I was trying to do what was best for my daughter. So you let her grow up, never knowing who she really is? I was afraid of Martin. Afraid of what he might do if the truth came out. He was so adamant that Danielle be a Jackson. And then there was Adam. It was my choice to keep my baby. I didn't want Adam to be saddled with the responsibility of a child for the rest of his life. Ruthie's young, and he has the right to a relationship with Maya, with anyone, and to someday have a family of his own. You know what hurts the most? 
that you couldn't come to me as a friend. If you'd only trusted me from the beginning, we could have found, we could have found a way to make things work out. Ruth, I wanted to. But I was afraid that you would hate me. I do hate you now. Not for bringing Danielle into the world, but for living a lie and forcing all of us to live a lie. That I will never forgive you for, Doreen. Mama, please go upstairs and get Danielle. Ruth. Honey, let's talk about this calmly. After all, our families have been... No, close. the bond is broken. Right now, I don't want any reminders in this house. Please go upstairs and get Danielle. She and her mother are leaving. I'm sorry for the pain I caused you, Henry, your family. I know this isn't easy for you, but try to understand. I was only doing what I thought was best for all of us. I love you like a sister. And... Even if you hate me from this day forward, it will not change my feelings for you. It just hurts so much that I let you down. I never meant to, Ruth. Please know that I never meant to. I think she's still asleep. Thank you, Mama Viv. The only thing I hope is that this doesn't change your feelings towards Danielle. She's your granddaughter. She doesn't deserve that. This doesn't change my feelings for Danielle one bit. But it does, it does change my feelings for you. You have destroyed our trust, Doreen, and that is unforgivable. I want you and your baby out of my house. I don't want you to come back here, ever. Do I make myself clear? Never see your grandchild again. Yeah. What was that for? Just so you know how proud I am of you for the way you're handling all this. <laughs> you are dazzling. I, I mean it. I I'm speechless. <laughs> well, you look pretty darn handsome yourself. What is it about a man in a tuxedo? Ah, uh, I wish I knew. You know, I can't remember the last time I've had one of these things on. Well, you look mighty fine, Dr. Rubens. Irene, you seem a bit nervous tonight. Is it because of dinner? Oh, 
well, that and uh, other things. I've just been so nervous since Martin ran off with Danielle. I even had the locks changed, but I've uh, made sure that the sitter has the number to the Winston, and I guess everything will be all right. Everything will be just fine. All set. Would you mind if we didn't go quite yet? Why? What's on your mind, Daniel? I talked to Maya and Adam. Well, I'm sure she's not too happy that you know everything. Well, at least now it's clear why she's been acting the way she has toward you. Well, she's just been trying to keep you from uh, my evil clutches. <laughs> <laughs> well, she'll just have to let me fend for myself. Because I am crazy about you. I like the sound of that. Will uh, Adam and Maya be coming tonight? Mm. Adam came by just as I was leaving. <sighs> Fasten your seatbelt. It may be a bumpy night. <laughs> <laughs> it's the first time I've seen uh, Ruth and Henry since they learned about Danielle. And now with Maya. Well, Maya's going to have to see us together sometime. Why not tonight? And as far as Ruth and Henry are concerned, I'm not going to let anything get you upset. If it were only that simple. I'm fine. Doreen, how wonderful to see you. Hello, Hello Daniel. Helen, you looked lovely. Oh, thank you. And you, my dear, that dress is sensational. Why, thank you. <laughs> Hello, Henry. Well, hello, Doreen. Looks like we're not quite a turnout tonight. Yes, well, we've worked hard enough, haven't we? <laughs> <laughs> Henry, how's that diet and exercise program going? Oh, I've been following to the letter. Except I miss being able to sneak a few free scoops when I'm down at the store. You know, the staff just keeps their eye on me. <laughs> Good for them. Good for them. <laughs> Mrs. Jackson, how about a photograph of you with tonight's honorees, Mr. and Mrs. Marshall? Oh, what a splendid idea. Come on, Doreen. You stand right in the middle between Ruth and Henry. Oh, that's just perfect. <laughs> Certainly. There we go. Right. Get closer together. <laughs> One more, if you don't mind. <sighs> you know, uh, I think it's time for us all to go in to dinner. Shall we? Mm -hmm. Henry, I swear, if they have me seated by that woman. Go in. Thank you, Daniel. Why did Doreen come with Daniel tonight? Because she's a slut. <laughs> Why in the world would Maya say something like that about Doreen? No, oh, Helen, don't take it so seriously. Calling Doreen a slut? I take that very seriously. Certainly not that Maya I know. Well, yeah, I, I think that they've, they've had a little bit of a tough time, uh, Maya and Doreen. They, they've had a bit of a disagreement. I think Maya was just letting off a little steam, that's all. Well, it must be quite a difference of opinion for Maya to be that upset. It was Doreen's friendship with her father, isn't it? Yeah, that's, that's part of it. Oh, I should have known. Maya's been her father's little girl for so many years now. I mean, all the time she was growing up, she had him all to herself. Yeah, Helen, why don't I take you to join the others? I should really look for Maya, shall we? All right. Maya, do you realize you just shocked the hell out of Helen Mullen? I don't care. <laughs> Maya, what is it with you? I thought you were fine about tonight. That was before I saw that vulture digging her claws into my father. Oh, Adam. Maya. Hi, Jay. Hey, we haven't seen you guys in a while. How you doing, buddy? Hey, all right. Good. 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 It's uh, quite a thing that they're doing for your parents tonight here. Yeah, well, it's for a good cause. Man. Yeah, it is. is. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? If you'll all take your seats, we'll begin serving dinner. Thank you. 
Well, Daniel, so how does it feel being the subject of a big Hollywood movie? Well, there's something I can tell you. <laughs> I'm just hoping I can get out there and visit when the filming actually starts. Have you been to Hollywood? No, but I love to go. <laughs> um, Helen, as the uh, chairperson for the events committee of the Arts Council, have you started working on the Christmas ball? Well, as a matter of fact, I was going to ask you and Doreen if you'd like to come over tomorrow and give me a hand with the arrangements. <laughs> well, I, you know, I think I'm going to have to put a claim on my wife. I need her full time on the books down at Marshall's these days. Oh, that's right, now that uh, Martin has left the company. You mean you and Martin Jackson aren't business partners anymore? Um, Martin's... Martin's left the country. Oh, um, was it on business? You might as well know the truth. Martin is in Brazil, and as far as anyone can tell, he won't be back. He can't come back without facing charges of fraud. Doreen, I'm sorry. Don't be. I'm filing for divorce. It's probably the best thing that could have happened. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you all enjoyed your dinner. I'd like to take this opportunity to bring up a woman who really needs no introduction. A woman whom we all know has given generously of her time and efforts to the National Association for Sickle Cell Disease. Mrs. Doreen Jackson. much longer. Thank you, Jerry. Uh, this year, I've had the great pleasure to be spokesperson for the National Association for Sickle Cell Disease. There's no cause closer to my heart. You see, last year I became pregnant with my first child. The joy I felt was shattered when I learned that I carried the sickle cell trait. After talking, with a counselor, I realized how little I knew about this disease, which afflicts not only African Americans, but people of Mediterranean descent as well. That's why it is so important to educate people about this disease and to encourage genetic testing. Our work is far from over. We need more testing centers, more research into new treatments and education programs. We cannot stop until we have found a cure for this disease. We're here tonight to honor two people who have given tirelessly of their time and their hearts to sickle cell research. And I would like very much for them to join me up here on the podium. Mr. and Mrs. Henry Marshall. May I speak to Dean? Ruth, Henry, on behalf of the National Association for Sickle Cell Disease, we'd like to present you with a plaque in recognition of your generous contribution to sickle cell research, along with the donation of your most precious commodity, your time, to help find a cure for sickle cell disease. Well. Thank you, thank you, Corey. Uh, this cause, uh, like to you, it's very close to our hearts. Ruth and I continue to be committed to support this fine research in the hope that one day a cure will be found. Your photographs, please. Thank you very much for coming. Very nicely done, Mom.
Good job, Dan. Uh, thank you, Scott. Thank yeah. you. Congratulations, you two. Thank you, Daniel. What a beautiful plaque, isn't it? There you are, Thank you. Ruth, Henry, this is just a personal thank you for all of the help you've given me in the association this past year. Somehow a plaque isn't quite enough. Well, thank you, Dory. I'm very proud of you. Excuse me. I'm going to the ladies' room to puke. Maya! Maya! Look, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, Maya's been under a lot of pressure lately. Look, I, I really hate to be the one to break things up, but Monique and I really have to be going. Yeah, I've uh, got a magazine to put to bed. Well, thank you both for coming. Thanks. Good night. Congratulations again. Thank you. Listen, you guys, I am so sorry. It's been such a uh, tense evening. Forget about it. There's obviously something going on that we don't know about. And when everything settles down, why don't you guys come over for dinner, you and Mike? That would okay. be really great. Thanks. Okay, hang in there. Bye, Monique. Bye. See you later, Jason. Mm. Helen, would you like to join Henry and me for nightcap? Oh, Ruth, I'd love to. I'll, I'll meet you both in the bar. All right, good. Adam, dear, would you like me to check on Maya in the ladies' room? Oh, Miss, Miss Mullen, Helen, that would, that would be great, please. You got it. Would you like to go? Will she be all right? Yeah, I think she will be. Her behavior is, I don't believe it, but she's been through a lot in the last couple of days. Don't take anything she says seriously, all right? I was very proud of you tonight. Thank you. You look a little tired. I am. Well, don't let me get a foot inside that door or I may never leave. <laughs> seriously, I'm hoping it won't be long before we can start spending our nights together. We have something to work out first. Ah, yes, my own. Yeah, yeah, she's not taking this well, you and me together. Well, she will just have to get used to it. <laughs> mm, oh, man, if you don't get out of here, I won't let you leave. Promise? <laughs> <laughs> Good night, Daniel. Thank you for uh, making me believe again. Good night. doing in my living room waiting for you how'd you get in here the babysitter i sent her home now you have just gone a little too far oh, shut up the baby's fine she's sound asleep what do you want maya i want to wipe this floor with you well come get me all right, what do you want? I want to wipe this floor with you. Come get me, bitch. You think you're so bad, don't you? Well, I'm not easy to handle, girl. In fact, I just might be your worst nightmare. You have the nerve to come into my house and threaten me. You don't know the meaning of the word nightmare until you are tangled with me. I watched you tonight, hanging all over Daddy like some cheap suit. You're a slut, Doreen Jackson. You always will be. All the money in the world won't clean you up. You disgust me. I don't care what you think. And Daniel Rubens loves me, and no little piece of street trash is gonna tell me otherwise. You will never have my father. I already have. And I will be having him again whenever I feel like it. You witch! Let go of my arm! Make you 
Something like that. Adam, I didn't mean to. I only came here to warn her. But she threw it in my face as she was sleeping with my father. And I just lost it. My God, my. Sometimes I just don't understand how your mind works. Then let me clarify. She's a cheap slut who uses men. You deserve whatever you got, and I'm doing it right. again. Oh, oh, right. oh, 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 so this is the woman you want to spend the rest of your life with. Well, more power to you, darling. I'm sorry. I am so sorry, Doreen. I don't know what to say about all this. You're sorry? You come in here automatically assuming I'm the one in the wrong? What the hell are you doing here anyway? You know what, my, I've had just about enough, enough of you, okay? This is nonsense. Oh, taking her side again, just like always. Well, fine, Adam, you can have her. I don't need this. Maya, I want you to get your butt back in this room and you owe an apology to Doreen. When hell freezes over. No, 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 it's all right, it's all right. It's all right, Doreen. It's all right. I'll go check on the baby. It's all right. It's all right. <laughs> Baby's sleeping. Thank you, Adam. Hey, I, I'm so sorry. I'm sorry that you walk in here and broke it up when you did. I can't believe that I sunk down to her level, Adam. I wanted to scratch her eyes out. God, look at me. Look at this apartment. I'm just glad I got here when I did. Do you realize that you two might have killed each other? Well, I wanted to. Believe me. Hey. You okay? I'll survive. Although, I'm a little embarrassed that I wallowed in the gutter with her. How dare she try to rob me of my dignity? I tell you, Adam. If she ever comes near me again, I will not be responsible. It will never happen again, I promise you. What's to change? Maya, 
despises me now more than ever. And I am telling you, no matter what she says or does, I will not stop seeing Daniel. And Adam, you and me, we joined for life because of Danielle. Those are the reasons Maya hates me, and those things are permanent. So, uh, what makes you think that this won't happen again? Or that uh, you can do anything to stop?